Hello again, Fleet Commanders. Welcome to another video here in my free-to-play tutorial series. Uh, today's a big day for this account. We are going to be building a pylum today. Um, this account is just shy of our 24-month anniversary. So that's how long I created this account in April of 2022. Again, 100% free-to-play. Never bought anything, never won anything on a content creator promotion or anything like that. Uh, this is just strictly just playing the game and spending zero dollars. Um, I chose the Pylum as compared to the other 46 rare ships. You do have a couple options here between the Coronar, the Pylum, or the Newton. Personally, because you have to spend so much rare ore upgrading buildings and things like that to even get to 46. I always have said that the Newton doesn't feel like uh, a good choice. I mean, if it's the one you want to go for, be my guest. But the Newton does require a tremendous amount of rare ore to upgrade, even just to get to, you know, uh, uncommon and rare ore when you actually want to get it. Well, actually not to tier six. You're actually okay without spending rares. I thought it was a little earlier than that. But going from six to seven here does require... Uh, quite a bit, so you're kind of going to get capped out here, um, probably a tier 4, tier 5 pretty quickly, because uh, in addition to rare ore on buildings, you're also spending on common too, so ore can be a bit of a bottleneck as you move through the mid 40s. But hey, if this is the ship you want to get, go for it. Um, it's got, you know, solid weaponry. It's got a decent firing pattern of 6-3, six, 6-3, three, six, three, that you're kind of alternating between energy weapons and then kinetic weapon. Uh, so solid ship. It's a battleship. A lot of good, you know, crewing options, burning kind of setups and things that you can run with it. Um, the Coronar, also good, solid, strong ship and explorers. Um, a lot of people build a Valdor at 42, so if you've already used a lot of your Explorer parts for that, then building a Coronar at 46, you don't want to overlap like that because you won't have a surplus of ship parts built up, and that's going to become a bottleneck for you. Uh, where to get the additional ship parts then? Uh, the Jellyfish Brawl event does help source um, common and uncommon Explorer ship parts. So if you haven't built a Valdor and you haven't really tiered up Voyager much, you probably don't haven't spent a lot of Explorer parts. So the Coronar could be a good option for you as well. Um, they all have the same ship ability, getting more resources from hostiles, so you can take that out of the equation. Um, and then it's just looking at you know, where the ship fits in terms of damage and firing pattern. This is also, again, this one's a little different. This one is five, four, two, and then seven, two, four. So you're kind of all over the place with the firing pattern on the Coronar. Only five in the first round, whereas the other one was six, but then you've got four in the second round. So you're still doing nine shots over the first two rounds of the fight. But the Pylum has long been the, the favorite. Again, same ship ability. Um, it is using crystal and gas resources that you will still need for building upgrades, but at certain areas you need them less than others. Uh, there are those points in time where it's, you know, upgrade all your dry docks and defense platforms and there goes all your crystal and gas. Uh, not saying that at all. It's not like, oh, this is just the easier path. There are it's scopely. They've put plenty of, of balance roadblocks in your way to keep you from uh, moving up quickly and eff effectively the way you would want to do it and kind of forced you into doing it the way they would want you to do it. So there are some challenges there, of course. Um, but a lot of people don't build the Kelvin necessarily. Uh, the Valdor is the more popular of the 42 ships. Uh, Defiant and Talios are both very popular you know, uh, specialty ships that will use up some of your uncommon interceptor parts, but you can still build up a nice stockpile. So by the time you do get to this ship, you are ready to go with it. Uh, you know, similar DPR, um, but this time around, you're looking at a 7-3 firing pattern. So like the Newton, uh, it's, it's a very stable and consistent firing pattern, but you're getting a one extra shot. The Newton is 6-3. 
the pylum is 7-3. So getting that extra shot when you start talking about things that can add two shots, um, you know, Armada officers like Chakotay or uh, Miles O'Brien, that kind of stuff, you can get a little bit of an extra boost out of having an extra shot. It's an extra shot, an extra critical, um, an extra isolytic damage. So that's why I personally have chosen the Pylum and why a lot of people do choose the Pylum. But hey, I mean, it's a 46 rare. It's a huge upgrade over anything else that you've had otherwise up to this point in the game. Uh, the other thing I do want to point out so you can mentally prepare yourself uh, for getting there. So when you get to operations, you know, going to 46 requires you to do defense platform E and your refinery. Your refinery requires you to do your vault. So when you're going from, when you're trying to get from 45 to 46, you have to do all of those vaults and um warehouses and generators and things they all have to go up to 45 not all of them all of them but the first two uh let's go inside and take a look and let's take some of this clutter off the screen too nope that was the wrong button let's close these down uh so you do have to get your vault up the vault requires the warehouse the warehouse requires the generators so you have to get all these up to 45, and they all require small amounts of rare ore. Obviously, any research you can do, or any of the new favors that might also help. Uh, we did get a recent uh, ex-Borg favor that was added just a month or two ago that does help lower the cost a bit with this. It is choice material construction. Increases the base cost efficiency of four and five star ore, crystal, and gas for buildings. Uh, even though it is only, you know, 10, 20% reduction, the net reduction on it is probably about half that, depending on, you know, your, your other researches and things. But even still, any little bit you can save definitely adds up over time. And the other thing that you have to be concerned with as you're progressing through here, I still have to do these buildings. We're going to do them in just a second. I'm just waiting for the uh, officer auction event to start here, which should have actually just started a minute ago. Um, you finish your operations. You have to do uh, the academy. So operations cost me about five to 6,000 rare ore, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go back to the website and just take a look. Uh, going from 45 to... Nope, that's not what I want. Operations, going from 45, taking it to 46. So yeah, so it's a big chunk, 30,000 uncommon ore, 10,000 rare. Assume you've got some research down, maybe you cut this in half. Uh, you're talking about 15 and 5 approximately, depending on, again, research and favors and things that you might have gotten completed by then. So after you spend all this to do the upgrade, even if you wanted to go you know, build that Newton, you're probably going to have a lot less resources to work with. But again, it's, again, it's kind of consistently, so that's a problem there. Um, in order to get after this, we have to go through, we have to build the Academy, which also takes more ore, as you can see there. Actually, let's just look at this. So 1683, uh, if I wanted to do... R&D, Academy, to 46. So it would normally cost 3,500. Mine's costing about 1,700. So yeah, close to just over 50% of that cost being reduced. Because I'm only needing 1,680. And this was 6,000 and it's you know 2,900. So uh, that's a good ballpark approximation here. So you're going to do the Academy. Then you're going to be able to do your R&D building, which is going to require a bunch of gas. And then you'd be able to come over here and build the shipyard. But there is one other caveat. This requires crystal, by the way. Uh, this also requires this research station sabotage to be done. And a lot of people don't know that. It's a hidden requirement because you're used to just upgrading buildings. Uh, there was one you had to do similar to this at Ops 42. It is in the combat tree. It is the next little wave of combat stuff. I believe at 42, before you could do anything and get your ship there, 
you had to build maybe it was station destruction. Let's just double check real quick. Uh, let's go back. Shipyard. Shield modulation. Sorry. Shield modulation was the one that you had to do, which is right here. Four-star shield modulation. So to advance from 42 to 46, you have to progress through this tree, picking up a minimal amount of some of these steps. I went a little further on a couple of them than you need to. Most of them only need to go to the first one or two levels uh, to be able to get to this ability out here, Station Destruction. But, I mean, it is, you're talking about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 researches that you have to unlock between 42 and 46. Some good stuff in here, obviously. Upgrading interceptors and battleships and making your survey ships a little stronger in case anybody wants to come pick them off while they're OPC. But just wanted to make sure to take a minute and point that out real fast. So that way you are prepared for by the time you start to move here that you've already taken care of that prerequisite. Now, our event right here for today should have just launched. We just got an update that there's a little bit of a lag issue, and they're looking into it. So I apologize that this is taking a little longer than normal, and I may hit pause from time to time while I'm just waiting for helps and things like that, just so you guys don't have to sit here and stare at a, my smiling face for any longer than... Uh, is humanly possible. All right, so we do have our Recruit Flocks event going on now. This is spending materials. Six million milestones. These went up slightly. These are a little bit more expensive. They must think very highly of him. Previously, these had been about five and a half million, so they did go up a little bit. All right, so let's get to work. Oh, there's also a St. Patrick's Day. Oh, oh, Porthos. Oh, well, that's why the price went up, because Porthos is involved. All right, so we're going to get to work here. We're going to do some of these upgrades real quick. And I'll just show the screenshots as it's happening. I'm going to be pausing, unpausing briefly as I go through this. All right, so we've just finished up the Academy. That was like an 80-day building. Now we're going to come over here. We're going to look at the R&D department. Again, 4,000 gas of both uncommon and rare. And it's a 105-day build on that one. Uh, so this is definitely a good time to wait <laughs> why I waited for the weekend. This is quite a bit of points for this Phlox event here, getting 400,000 or so. Should help out with that. Getting some points there. Hey, look at that. Uh, also, don't forget to use your exocomps. And the other thing I'm working on, too, is some uh, efficiency research for uh, ship parts that I also neglected a little bit. I totally forgot on this account that... Um, oh, I need latinum. I'm going to need latinum to speed some stuff up, so let's do this real fast. Totally forgot in the... Outlaw tree. Wow. That was a oof, total brain meltdown right there. Uh, and the outlaw tree that there is some efficiency for ship parts that I I did the first couple levels and then I totally forgot to come back to it at some point and do the rest of them. So I'm also just knocking these out of the way real quick. You've got these here in the front of the tree to lower your component efficiency a little further on. You also get ship component efficiency that's out here that can help and don't forget all the way out here at the end trying to do a couple levels of this as well to get your tritanium upgrades and stuff cost lowered um, tritanium components get very expensive in terms of the amounts that you need anything you can do to make those lower whether it's through here uh, there's a bunch of researches also in the territory tree that help in terms of efficient ship upgrades to lower parts 
and then you also come down here you've got a little further out you've got the optimized ones so you've got optimized ship upgrade to lower parsteel tritanium and dilithium costs this is a much bigger percentage than the other one um, there are also some additional ones in oh gosh there's a few other ones, so just make sure you're hitting all of them. We can go to Spox Club, actually. It's probably the best place to find uh, all of your different researches, and we'll go look at that in just a second here, because I'm sure I'm forgetting one. It's probably in the Starship tree. This is all stuff for the Mantis. This is all stuff for the Defiant. This is the Titan stuff. That's not it. That's repair ones. That's a good one to also get. Uh, this is one that gives you more parts that's dropped by stuff. All right, we're going to go pull up Spox Club here and figure out what exactly other ones I might be missing. We go to the cost calculator, and if we were to say pylum, current tier, and let's just say I want to get it to tier two. So this will show you all of the different repair researches in the station tree that will make those costs lower. A couple in the outlaw tree, territory tree, starship maintenance. Uh, but over here is where you have your build research. So station tree, you've got a couple of primes for efficiency for ship parts. You've got your faction ones. You've got some of your four-star ones that were in the station tree. We'll go look at that. This is further on in the station tree. This is actually getting into five-star territory before you can get to some of this stuff. Uh, we just covered the ones in the outlaw tree and the territory tree. There's also some other ones in the galaxy tree. Then you've got a couple of artifacts, Spock's engagement pendant, that's going to lower uh, tritanium and dilithium cost. The Katinga one's going to lower the crystal gas and ore parts. Assembly line in the Borg favors is also going to lower your costs, so a lot of good stuff in here. Spock's.club is the website. Uh, definitely recommend using this from time to time when you are trying to plan out some of these big investments, making sure you've hit as much of the ref efficiency research as you can, and you can see in real time exactly you know, how much of an impact it will have, because you can look at what your base cost is, and then it'll show you, uh, I'm sorry, your base cost, and then the calculated cost. So if I were to you know, just change this to this, and uh, let's say this is level 2, and this is level 2, and now we can come back up here and say instead of 23,000, it's actually 18,000. Instead of 8 billion tritanium, it's 5 billion tritanium to take this from tier 1 to tier 2. So you're talking about some big numbers. So anything you can do to start chipping away at those is always a good thing. Uh, the other, you know, the, the, the new the primes they put out a couple well, almost over a year ago now, I would say, these multi-level primes right in here. Uh, these are upgradable through the dolomite particles that you get through the Voyager uh, field training. You also can get a daily sourcing of them through the Syndicate faction store. It's only 10 a day, but every little bit counts here. And if you get you know a couple of these done, even the first couple levels, 5%, eh, but by the you know, level 2, 20%, that's a decent reduction. And then if you can keep moving them up over time, again, in preparation for getting to an event like this, or even as you continue to make progress going forward, if you're planning on building a, a 50 epic, or even when you get to 53 and build an uncommon, uh, these are universal. These, these ones are for all your ship parts ever, so... A lot of people did make a cash purchase of these, but it's not necessary. It just takes longer now that you want to, if you want to try and just source it through the game. I've been able to knock off a couple of them to make that process a little easier. So let's finish up our R&D here. 
we're talking about again don't want to use all my latinum i have a little bit of speed ups here that i can also knock out some of those costs i do like to try and keep a a uh, bit of a balance between them so I'm not paying latinum for everything there's R&D completed oh, also completes a quest gives me some more speed ups haha -ha. and then lastly we're gonna come over here and we're gonna do the shipyard using up a nice big chunk of crystal not too bad though and crystal is one of the resources that is sourced a a little more abundantly um, as Scopely did the math and determined that more ships and buildings and components and researchers and things use crystal than the other two resources. So what you will typically see sometimes with this, if I ever get through all of my events that I just completed there, uh, when you're talking about things like ticket events and if they are paying out rewards, you know, the gas one here gave... 620 uncommon and 173 rare in the final milestone the one that pays out tritanium and crystal is paying out almost double that so that's kind of another reason that interceptors are a little more popular for things because the resources are a little bit the primary resource being crystal is a little bit easier to, to get some access to on a consistent basis because they've altered the numbers to typically pay out a little bit more crystal than the other materials. If you're doing things like ticket events or even some of the other um, six hour events sometimes will will pay out more of one than the other. Uh, actually this is a bad example because I'm in the 40s so uh, I'm still getting three-star materials in these missions because they never fixed that. All right. I'm just going to pause it again real quick while I just speed some more stuff up. We'll be right back. All right, so we're finishing up the shipyard here. Oh, one other thing I forgot to do was actually finish buying the blueprints. So we'll do that real quick in just a second here. Uh, I also want to do get my scrapyard now that once you get the shipyard up to 46 then you can also get your scrapyard up to 46 this opens up the option to I believe start scrapping the 32 rares I believe that they require if we go to g3 rares like the Burrell I think they require a scrapyard of 46 yes required scrapyard level 46 so that'll give you the option to start scrapping if you have any, you don't no longer need them, or if you want to build and level them up for parts. If you have blueprints and things like that you're looking to get through, um, you are looking at them paying out a decent amount of four-star materials, depending on what ship you're going for there. Probably still more efficient to do uh, a 26 or a 28 because they require less blueprints to acquire which less faction credits to buy the blueprints and less resources to level up so you can probably level up two ships for the price of one and your net uh, gain is going to be higher in terms of ship parts and materials but if you already had a barrel because for some reason you know so you built one at 32 and it's just been sitting in your you know uh, ship hangar not really being used much anymore when you get to 46 throw it in the scrapper Lastly, faction credits. Coming here to our Romulan store. It is, I want to say it's about 500,000. We can take a look and get the actual number right here real quick. It is on, uh, total blueprint cost is 508. So if you were just buying the blueprints from the faction store in game, it's 350 blueprints that you need total. And they cost fourteen fifty a piece, so five hundred and eight thousand to do this. I started doing this a little earlier. Um, you can also get them from your away team store. So all those away team assignments you've been doing, you've been getting some of that currency. 
Um, when you get this high, you can go ahead and knock some of it out with the pylum. Get some of those, you know, two or three a day. I go for two a day is what I was doing. The three a day is, you know, one a day costs, I think it's like 4000 And then to get the second one, it's like 13000 So you're getting two for the, place, for the price of three. We'll go look at it in a second. That was the wrong button. Uh, to get three blueprints, it's the cost of five. So you're basically, you know, you're buying three at the price of five. So if you have time and you can, you know, get to this point between getting your reputation up and whatnot, and you can start sourcing them at either 45, I believe it is. might actually be as low as 44 if you have the rep. But definitely by 45. And you need about 300, just shy of 300 million reputation. I think it's somewhere in the 290s that they switch on. And there it is. There's the final blueprint that we need. Uh, my Federation rep here is 297, and I can see the Newton blueprints in my away team store. So it's, it's a little lower than that, probably in the 290s somewhere. I feel like it's where, 280s, I feel like it's where it turned on here. But as you can see from the cost, it's 4000 a piece. It's 12000 and change. So buy two at the price of three. Uh, and this one is 20000 which is five times as much. So you're, you're paying for five, but you're only getting three. So if you have the time and, you know, you're working on working your way through it, uh, you know, chip away at two a day, or if you if you're gonna be, you know, if you're months out from getting there, then just take the one a day and just slowly just keep knocking them, knocking them out. Uh, the other place you can potentially is the G4 Epic Armada pack. Uh, it's gonna cost you between thirty and sixty five thousand, depending on what level you're pulling these at. At forty five, I believe, is when the these blueprints start showing up, and it was about thirty thousand a box. When I moved to forty six, it doubled uh, but it does have the option to potentially get a full pull so i mean you know for the 0.01 percent chance that could happen doubling the cost seems appropriate but you do have some of your blueprints in here are probably sourced 15 or 20 uh, out of this you can also go try and kill things to get them to drop blueprints anything level 49 and up has a chance Obviously, the higher you go, the more likely the chance is in terms of sourcing these. So, I mean, you can go try and hunt the, the heavy capital traders in Romulus. If you want to go here to Romulus and try and kill the heavy traders, most people can, you know, kill a couple of them depending on what your crew is um, and your ships that you have to work with. Sometimes you can get 10 to 15 per hull. By killing these things in here just remember there are of course the two different types of traders there's the regular ones and the heavy ones the heavy ones use uh, kinetic weapons so you need talon for them the regular ones use energy weapons so you would use chen to hunt them uh, or you can use you know neither and just go with like a strange new world's crew or janeway and uh, data isolytic damage or something like that just because I'm curious. What's this guy using? He's going Picard, Beverly, and Data. Just going again for the extra isolytic damage boost. Kind of cutting through them pretty easily. You could use a crew like that and really cut down on being able to hit either one then. So you don't have to worry about just only finding a system full of heavies and you're crewed out for the regular ones. So some is more of a universal crew like we just saw Dr. Sir Lord using over here. Dr. Lord Sir, my, uh, my apologies. The other place, you know, obviously you can, uh, you know, if you want to take a ship like Voyager or Ammonavine, if you have one of them and come out here and kill higher level hostiles, you can do that. There's also one of these systems out here that you can relocate your base to. I forget exactly which one it is. Um, it might be, it might be this one, Jorda. 
but if you relocate your base out here and then you can pick whatever ship you feel comfortable with uh, farming hostels with instead you could potentially get some stuff off the 49s and 50s out here and do a lot of farming with that if you also have the warp capability to reach into g5 space you can relocate your base i believe to rem which just has explorers so if you have a battleship and you want to just hunt explorers out here you're killing lots of 49s and 50s these are and 51s these are a little stronger they do have a special ability because they're g5 hostiles uh, but again it's a consistent way to try to kill some of the stuff the drop rate's not the greatest but i know some people are like whatever anything i can do to make it cheaper so i'm giving you all the options we're just laying them all out on the table for you all right, let's get this thing cooking here. Interceptor. Build in a pylon, build in a pylon. 54 days. I don't quite think we're going to wait that long, but we are going to be back in just a second after I get some of these helps done. All right, I think we got all the helps we can get now. I also did just notice as well that one or another research, I only had a few, uh, I had a couple levels still missing, so I'm working on that real quick here too. But we are going to actually get this ship built here. Ain't she pretty? It's a cool looking ship. The Romulans, I think, have the coolest looking ships. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I'm a little short here, so let's get this one done. Uh, pure crystal I only had up through like level seven. I was like, wait a minute, that's gonna lower the cost of all my upgrades on that ship a little bit here. So let's grab another level or two of that. That one's in the galaxy tree. See, it's a good thing I went to Spock's Club. I started looking at things, going, hey, did I did I get everything that I could? And the answer to that was no, I did not. Lower my crystal cost efficiency for upgrading stuff. Another. Uh, two levels, or two percent, rather. But let's see what we got here. So, my Tier 7 Defiant is just shy of 16 million, uh, right here in the station. Coming out of the box, Tier 1 Pylum, just over 18 million. So already a bit of an upgrade. And if you're looking at even just more defense, a lot more hull health. Um, obviously, we're going to have an issue with officer slots for a little bit until I get it up a little bit. But you're talking about uh, some of this other stuff here in terms of hull health, shield health. All these numbers are, are higher. Warp range and stuff is going to take a little bit. And same thing with cargo to get boosted up there a little bit. But we're going to work on that as we, you know, get it tearing up. DPR is also going to be down slightly for now, but uh, not for not for too long here. Uh, just a reminder again, the ship ability here, Pylum gains 10% more resources from hostiles. That means anything that you kill, anything that you would get from it by killing it, you get 10% more of. Uh, armadas, regular hostiles, you get more faction reputation, you get more armada credits, and all the 46 rares have that same ship ability. So it is a tremendous upgrade to accelerate your, your growth and things. You know, going out and all these daily loops and grinds that you have to do, and they keep adding more and more of to the game, uh, get a little bit easier when you have a ship like this at your disposal because now you're getting 20 30% more loot off of everything you kill, uh, especially some of those systems that might require you to go into token space uh, although those usually require specialty ships, so there's not a 
necessarily a lot you can do there, but your Zindi grinds. Uh, you can also, though, there is a, a crew and stuff you can use um, with Tal, if you have him, a burning crew. You can take this and go hunt Axian hostiles and actually potentially get more loot than a Mantis would. You see a lot of people doing that. The cargo capacity gets a little bit better, too. You get up to, you know, 300, 400 thousand whereas the mantis might only have you know 175 to 200 depending on where you've got it so you can have to do that less because of uh, the ship ability here with the the pylum all right let's see what we got here so we're just using commons for the first one but we're using 200 million per component here for that tritanium so that's going to go pretty quickly that's 500 so we're already up to about a billion between those first four components here. I started at about 33 billion. And just like that, we're gonna tear that up. And while we're doing that for a second, I do wanna go back over here, check on my crystal research. Let's get that done. And dang, I think I just used an extra one that I didn't need to. Okay, I think that should be all done now. Parts are done here. Pure crystal is done. What else is on the checklist here in the galaxy tree? Pure Romulan interceptor parts is in the galaxy. Pure Romulan ore I can also do to make anything cost a little less ore. That might also be helpful because I believe ore is the secondary function. Am I missing this one? Oh, it's all the way out here. This is not available until I get my engine tech lab up to 46. And I also have to do this battleship stopping power research, which requires the bones boost, which requires everything that comes before it. So to get battleship stopping power, bones boost, so I'd have to go through quite a bit of this tree in order to get there. The downside to free-to-play, you only have one research slot to work with, so that does take a little longer to get some stuff done. All right, let's see what we got here. The star base tree, we have component duplicator. This one is as high as I can go until we get our uh, star base up higher. So yeah, that's not going to happen anytime soon. And the X Borg tree here, component boost is maxed, so that one's done. And then there's the G4 Prime, which we're not dealing with here, because we don't have a way to source these materials free to play. Uh, the Mess Hall is also one that does lower your Tritanium costs. Don't forget about that one, getting your Mess Hall up as much as you can, because this will also lower your cost efficiency more than a lot of the other researches. Uh, you know, the way the power creep in the game works, this is newer, and this is designed to incentivize players to want to spend on it. So it is a bigger upgrade than a lot of the original researches that you saw in Outlaw Tree, Galaxy Tree, things like that, that have been here for three, four years. This building's a lot newer, so this is a bigger upgrade to that, those stats. So I think we've got just about everything else that I can do here. Uh, let's go look in the station tree. Make sure I didn't miss anything here. I got... Oh, this one can make that cheaper if I want to do some of this other dilithium-based research. Probably should, because I only have 15 billion dilithium, but that requires doing some of this stuff. Romulan ship structure. This is a good one to do. This is going to lower the cost of Tritanium and Dilithium by 18%, which is probably better than some of those other researches there would do, so let's knock that one out. Also, if I advance through this tree, I have to go out a little bit. This next little section here, if I can move through this, there's a couple up here, Interceptor, Tritanium, Dilithium, and Pure Crystal. I feel like the prerequisites on these, though, flip back and forth between the two of them. So you also have to do the bottom half of the tree, which can be 
pricey, depending on if you have the resources and stuff for it. All right. Let's work on our tier up, get that done. So tier one is in the books. We started at 18 million. We're already up to 18 and a half. Again, haven't done any ship levels yet. That's going to make a big difference. But now we're already into using uncommon materials for some of this stuff. So let's just, this particular research, what was it going to save me? I want to say it was, what, 18%? Yeah, we're going from 82 to 100. So it's going to save me 18%. So if we just look at right now what the cost is here in terms of a tritanium component, 420 and 21 million. This one I need about 100 more crew levels. So that's not going up anytime soon. Oh, also finished up Cosmic Cleanup for the day by uh, upgrading some ship parts. Now, other fun thing about Cosmic Cleanup, and I don't know how many people know this. I feel like we talked about this recently. So your battle debris right here that gives you your spore drive and your nanoprobes and your divorce ship parts and ship XP, it's got a secret component to it. Most people, once they finish up, their discovery and things like that, they switch and they don't need ship blueprints anymore. They switch over to the tactical adv advantage supplies to try and get rare directives, which drop pretty infrequently. There's only a, a chance to even get them from here. But what they may or may not know is that this battle debris bundle was uh, secretly updated a while ago to also have a chance to start giving out, hey, four star ship parts. Don't see them advertised anywhere in the options. But there they are. Um, all four ships equally have a chance. So I got lucky. I got interceptor parts. I'll take them. Would be nice if they let people know that that was even a possibility. Yep, throwing some side eye. Sure am. All right, let's get this research up. And what did we say? It was 420 million. And getting that little bit there, it was 18% reduction. Took me down to 407 and change. So I saved 12 million tritanium off of this component. I'll take it. Let's start doing some of these. Let's try and get through this tier. I'd like to try and get the tier four if I can. I don't know if I'll have enough gas to get there. Ship parts are also eating up a decent chunk here too. Because tier, tier four gives you three officer slots below deck once you get it to level 20. That was 2,000 gas. That was a little pricey. Okay, we are getting low on gas, but hey, we're still chipping away at it. We are going to get it here to Tier 4. That's solid. Now, could I keep going? That is also the question. So that's 1,300, 1,300 more. 
3,000. That's about 5,600. I think I'm going to come up just short on gas from being able to do this whole tier. So I'm going to be a little more selective this time around. Um, I'm going to do warp range because I definitely want to make sure I've got that. I'm going to do cargo in case I want to go kill Axian hostiles with this thing. Uh, defensive stats will probably go first. So we're just shy on four-star gas here. So that'll be something I'll have to work on. And I've got some stuff that I can... i got a barrel I can throw in the scrapper right now. That'll give me some four-star gas in a couple of days. Also other events and things I might get some extra four-star gas out of over the next couple of days here. But this was overall a good start. We're already up to 21.5 million here. And we're going to go grind some ship levels real quick. Uh, personally, I like to do my ship XP grinding against Eclipse Hostiles. They usually give out a pretty good amount of resources, uh, about an amount of XP, and we can get that leveled up pretty quickly, and they don't really take a whole lot to kill. Uh, as far as our ship ability, let's pull this back up again real quick. So we're still at level 1 right here. I'm getting 10% more resources. But I can take it all the way up to level 20 now, which will actually be a 35% increase. Uh, that's outside of other loot crew, other researches and things that you might have that might give you extra loot. You know, you see through a 5 of 11 or, you know, uh, Enterprise E Picard on there. Gets yourself a loot bonus. Solo armadas, regular armadas, faction hostiles. You know, whatever else that you're out there killing and grinding for. Get yourself a nice little bonus. And so we'll get up here to 35%. And then at 20, I get three officer slots to work with, which isn't bad. Uh, going from 20 to 35 to get that fourth officer slot, that's all the way up through tier 7. It's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. Also, I believe once I... I think I have to get this to tier 6. I'm going to go look for the chart uh, to get my component for my Borg cube. But I'm going to go look for that in just a second. Oh, there's a Heroic Officer Recruit event. Got some more ship parts. Did I finish the Flocks event? Nope. We're only up to Milestone 3 here. So we're making a bit of a... We got about halfway there. Doing upgrades that I really wanted to do. So not like I'm excited about Flocks. I don't think he's that special of an officer. But... We'll take some ore. I mean, might as well at least time it and, and get the upgrades when you can. All right, so let's just knock a few of these guys out. I need 8,000 for level 1 XP. I should definitely get that and more here. Plus, I also have to kill Eclipses for a ticket event. All right, look at that. This should, so, again, double your flavor, double your fun, right? <laughs> oh, that guy's got his, his board cube is uh, 186 million. This is what, tier 10? Yeah, tier 10 board cube, level 50, ops 57. 186 million strength, which is about the equivalent of a tier 5, tier 6 of the G5 on commons. You know, like if, you, if you took a, a Katinga or a, a Corvus or something like that to about tier 6, you'd be in that same range of about 180 million power. So... The board cube is still pretty solid. It does still get pretty good here. We're getting 14,000 ship XP per kill here. So this shouldn't take too long at all. But speaking of board cubes, I did want to go look at that chart. So hang on a second. I'll be right back. All right, so I did go over and find the chart. For those of you wondering where I found all these wonderful charts, well, I just went to the 
STFC officer tool discord page. And then I went down to this lovely section where blue, a blue Mandalorian and Jules Verne keep all of their charts. Thanks to it's lube and Stewie do for hosting them on their server. And then you just come in here to the chart section or the, go to the index, find the board cube stuff and you can find all of your cube charts and stuff right there. And then I pulled up this handy little guy right here. Um, once you get your G4 rare to tier six, it will then give you the prerequisite component for whatever it was that you upgraded it here. So I'm upgrading my Romulan ship to tier six. That will give me the ability to take my cube up to tier seven. Currently I'm locked here at, at tier five. I did not build a 42 ship. I was using specialty ships to kind of get me through. We skipped the 42, I saved all the resources so I could put them into buildings so I could get to the 46 spot a little faster. Something else, you know, a choice I made uh, in order to keep progressing and get to this point. Because I feel like they're a significant upgrade over the 42s anyway. And now it will let me backfill because the component I get here lets me take it to tier seven. So I don't need one of these to get to tier six. So I can get my cube up those extra two full tiers uh, once I get the pile them up. Obviously, it's cheaper to get the Valdor to tier six than it is to get the pile them to tier six. But, you know, it is what it is. So let's see how we're doing here. Barely taking any damage killing these things. We are already up to level seven here, getting 15,000 a pop. And again, as I progress up, I will start getting slightly more XP as well. Fight's going four rounds here. I'm doing, okay, I'm doing decent damage. My DPR, three million around now, okay. That's base, before you start adding in officer abilities and stuff, so. Once I get some of those officer below deck slots unlocked, then I can start putting people like Hugh on there and then they all become criticals and throw Torres down there to get some hull breach and then you're really in business. You could do this with ship XP. You could do this with Latinum if you want. I prefer to save those resources, again, especially here because these first handful of levels don't take very long. And when you're getting, you know, 12 to 15,000 XP per kill, you know, you're moving the needle fairly quickly. You could also do this with, you know, different crewing. Again, because it's a resource, loot crew should give you a bonus on that. Uh, there are officers like Goon, like Talon, that do boost uh, ship XP gained. Uh, the other shakedown crew people, Leslie and Hendorf and those guys, if you have them. You can put together different crews specifically to focus on ship XP. There are also exocomps that you can use. Don't forget about those that give you a ship XP boost. But overall, this is moving at a fairly quick pace, which I'm okay with. 15,000, 14,000 a kill. I need 100,000 per level. We're talking seven kills. And there's another level gone. So not a whole lot of time spent here. And plus, say, who knows? I get a little bit of uh, Eclipse security code so I can do a turn in. There's other things you could obviously grind doing this. I like these just because they're high uh, ship XP gained with low risk. They're doing very little damage to me. Obviously, there are things I could be killing that would give me more ship XP. But at least for the first handful of levels until I get some of those officer slots unlocked, I'd like to, you know, kill some soft targets before venturing out and taking on anything a little more dangerous, a little more damaging. You know, I could go up to hit some of those capital traders we were looking at earlier, or I could go up to 
uh, Bajoran space and go hit some of the higher level hostiles out there. I've got warp 200 on this thing now, so I do have some some range to work with. Also, by going to 46, now that my R&D is at 46, I can do another level of the warp particle research, which I just remembered. That'll get me an extra five. Let's go in here to our galaxy tree and queue that one up. Enhanced warp cores at 46. Now it gets another one of these available, giving yourself five more warp range. It says consume a warp particle to increase the base range of all ships. That's only for the first level. Every level after that doesn't require any additional currency. So don't read this and think, man, where, where, where am I going to find these other warp particles? You don't need them. It's only for the first level. And if you have questions on that, I have a whole separate video all about warp particle research. All right, 300 gas right there. So I needed like 2,000, and this ticket event is, uh, is paying out pretty good. And I'm still going to get one more payout out of that one, so that'll help a little bit. Or mining, that's going to give me tritanium. This is the domination one. These are the ones from yesterday. I didn't finish my helps yet. Uh, that's ore. Okay. Okay. So nothing to be gained from that one. But we'll get another couple hundred. Off of this. I'm just going to pause it for a second here while I finish doing up some of these kills. All right, we finished our ticket event and managed to get the ship all the way to, what are we at, like 13? 12. Got all the way up to level 12. Just doing the ticket event, the kills I needed for that, most of the way through 12. Uh, we're going to go back to base. We're going to drop off our cargo. We're going to repair real quick, and then we're going to go test out some different options and things. This one's already crewed up for it, so I'm probably just going to swap ship slots here. Um, I'm only going to have two officer slots, so let's move you guys. Because the doctor's giving me 20%, he's giving me 20%. And we're going to go to hit some Axian hostels and uh, take a peek at that and just see what we can get. Because right now, my Mantis... has a cargo capacity of 182,000. Now, I can obviously switch the crew around a little bit if I'm using the Mantis, and I can put you know people like Stan and stuff there. Don't need as quite, quite as much offensive stuff because the buffs you get from using the Mantis uh, aren't bad. So I could get it up a little higher than that, probably up to about 200,000. But I could also take the pile. Oh, it's about the same cargo capacity. All right, so I get it up to higher tier. Maybe I'll worry about that. Uh, but right now, if you were going to do it, this is the crew you would probably use to do it uh, once you get your cargo capacity up a little bit more. Uh, you could also put people below decks that boost cargo room like um, Data or Talon. No, Laon. Sorry, wrong one. <laughs> well, let's go kill some more fun stuff then. Uh, we're up to about 23 million, so I got about 5 million more power just from getting some of those levels. The other thing we were commenting on in uh, my Alliance chat while this was all going on is I built the Academy, I built the R&D, I built the Shipyard. Three major buildings, and I took the sh I built the ship and then took it from Tier 1 all almost all the way through Tier 4, and yet that was still only enough to get halfway through the SMS uh, for flocks here. <laughs> They definitely set the price points on these high. I mean, they they say they value an unlock of an epic officer at like four hundred dollar equivalency of materials, and they are not kidding about that number. But let's see what else we can go kill here. 
but let's just grab actually you know what I'm not gonna grab Hugh yet um, I'm going to go take on some uh, Zindi let's go take on some Zindi people you know previously up to this point what I had been doing is taking on level 40s in here let's go see how we do against them now all right, so we went out, we took on some Zindi Hostiles. Unfortunately, I did not hit the unpause button before I did a full repair. Uh, I think it was around 50, 55 million Tritanium to do a repair here at Tier 4. But fighting some of these level 40 Zindi Hostiles, still taking a decent amount of damage here, but uh, the fight is only going three rounds. It's probably because I just don't have high enough mitigation. Again, with the officer slots, I don't have Paris in there, who's probably the one that would normally be there. Uh, we're still managing to mitigate 71%, so actually maybe I don't need them. Because we've got, right now, it's just doing damage with Tendi and Mariner currently below deck for fighting and taking on those guys. So we did manage to kill a couple of them here and you know get some decent loot rewards off of each of them. Got about 2,000, which is enough to do a daily pull. Although I did get lucky and find one of the survey ships here which was good for a nice little chunk all on its own. We're going to finish repairing here. It's an eight hour repair time. We are going to swap below deck officers out. We're going to move her up. And I also want to grab Hugh. Now, my Balana is only tier 3 on this account, so she's not going to proc as much as I would like her to. But let's just go take on some of these level 49 heavy traders here, right? Let's go take out a few of them and just kind of see how that goes. The other thing I do want to try in a minute as well. Uh, I'll switch crews next after this, and we'll go take on some of the new silent enemies, because previously I had uh, not really been successful taking those on with this account. Um, you know, loading up with exocomps and buffs and things, I could kill one per hull, which really was not worth doing. Uh, it's with the Defiant, uh, tried various crews, different successes, and ultimately settled on the Severus Burning Crew with full synergy uh, and max mitigation, every mitigation officer I could throw on the ship and, and boost stats and things like that to get me to be able to live through five rounds and again, and even using an exocomp to add uh, officer stats was still only enough to get one kill per hull there, so it did not help at all for this new refinery. But maybe now that we've got some additional muscle, we can give this a shot again. We can try and get some of this materials there to do uh, a trade-in on. We're okay on there. And then we can also hopefully start doing some waves again. Because I'd like to be able to start doing this, and you know, at 600 per kill, it when I need what 3,000 for a turn in, yeah. So I decided a couple days ago to just stop doing them, and then I would just get save up on the tokens, and then when I got this built over the weekend, I could come back and try again. All right, so let's give this a shot. See how these guys go. And again, because of the crew I'm using here, it shouldn't matter which way I'm going with this. Whether I'm killing the regular ones or the heavy ones. Getting 12,000 XP, taking very little damage. We did just empty out our items, so if we happen to get lucky, maybe we'll get a few uh, ship blueprint pulls or something. All right, so we got a bunch of kills in here. We got one of the regular ones, 
This fight went eight rounds. She did, oh, she's only 15%. Torrance is only tier two on this account. Oops, my mistake. Um, I might have to swap her out then. I don't know that if I only have two officer slots and she's only giving me 15%, I might have to go with a better option here. And also, Hugh is not the best officer against these things because they only shoot once per round. But when he does work, giving you some nice extra criticals for two rounds there like he just did there, you can speed some this, this fight along. Didn't really take a whole lot of damage there. Getting about 12,000 uh, ship XP per kill. And even the heavies ending the fight in six rounds. So Hugh either... Oh yeah, so Hugh, Hugh pumped up twice here. Three rounds in a row. Okay, and then we just started laying into all the criticals. And ended that fight pretty quickly. We got six chests for our troubles, but a whole lot of nothing. So we're going to repair real quick. We're going to swap some officers around, and we are going to go try the new silent hostels. Uh, I think for this experiment, I'm going to use Janeway, Doctor, and Data. And we'll go with Hugh below deck. And since Balan is not reliable, even though I might have one of her abilities, we are going to I want the doctor. guess we'll put Tendi back there to get the extra hull health. We're going to run with this crew. For the silent hostiles, you can use criticals. The doctor is going to be my mitigation. And let's go try. Currently, I have to kill 46s. So let's go see what we can do. You know what? Hold that thought. Because I also need to do my Titan buff daily. So I might as well just go do that now. We'll fly them both out here to this 38 system. I'll pop the Titan buff on the pylum. Then I'll send it in. And at least give it a little bit of an extra boost. So it's not just the ship. There's, there's a buff involved here. But a lot of people are buffing to fight these hostiles anyway. Some people are doing max fortification and a Cerritos buff, and they can still only kill four or five uh, per trip right now just because of the uh, drastic power difference between some of these things. All right, so we're unpaused and we're ready to go here. I do want to try and find 46s. As opposed to 49s when doing this. Looking at rewards, 300 is the base reward there on a 46 versus 448 on a uh, 49. But the 49s are, you know, 75 million power bigger. Wow. I, I killed one, but just one. Fight went 13 rounds. That's why I didn't do enough damage. Didn't take it down fast enough. So she's putting... Janeway's putting a lot of damage. The shields are dropping, obviously, because the fight's going too long. So the thing about these guys is that... Obviously, they applied the burning to you. But you're also... Uh, it gets a 350% bonus to its critical damage at the start of each round. So by the time you get to round 10, it's 3,500% bigger... And if it lands some crits in these later rounds, the first four rounds are guaranteed criticals. But when you get to like round eight, round nine, if it can land any 
criticals out here with its normal crit rate. That's usually where you take a pretty decent chunk of damage. Looks like we're we did okay there, so maybe it was really just those early rounds, taking those big shots in the early rounds. Oh, there's one for four and a half million. That one definitely left a mark, taking off 1.2, 1.3 million hull health compared to 29,000. Oh, and there's another one right there. Okay, so there's two big criticals in round three. In round 11 there, there's three big critical hits. So that's where a large chunk of that damage came from. Just not taking the fight down fast enough. Needs more damage. Or, this would be where you switch crew options, right? Well, if the fight's going 13 rounds and I'm dying, then the obvious answer would be is to switch to a full synergy crew. Because that's guaranteed to finish the fight in five rounds as long as I can live long enough for that to happen. And since we're doing that, then we don't, I need mitigation, so I don't need you there, I need you. So we're going to try this. When they make me burning, I'm dropping their hull health by 20%. And then because I'm going against battleships, Charvenek will help a little bit with doing some extra damage. And Decius will also help here with the weapon damage. Now my defense is not great on this. He's boosting by 250% of defense. So I am also going to use a uh, an exocomp here for this next run. It's a galaxy exocomp. Officer stats. There's health. There's defense. Okay, so we're going to do a one hour plus 100% to defense. And that got me a little extra. And let's go try this again and see if hopefully we can kill more than one this time around. All right, so we flew back out here. And now we're looking for something. We're going to try another 46 here. And hopefully this will go. This, now, this fight should end in five rounds automatically. The question is, is, do I have enough mitigation and stuff like that? Because the way I switched crews around, I don't have Janeway uh, putting more into the shields. I don't have the Doctor also giving me additional mitigation. Yeah. So we're still taking way, now we're, we're taking way more damage because I don't have quite as big there. I don't have enough stats because I only have the two officer slots to, for Paris to really be effective. So even though I'm ending the fight in five rounds, I'm still taking almost as much damage as I did the other time around because I'm now mitigating a lot lower. Two six zero eight nine six. Forty eight percent. Whereas the other time around, well, the first shot's going to go through at about even less. I mean, that's like thirty percent. I mitigated the first time around, but then the doctor's ability and kicks in. And now I'm mitigating a lot better there. Now we're up to 65%. So uh, we'll continue to have, have to upgrade officers and, and get more ship slots. This uh, mechanic may still elude me for a little while until I can get some of those other things worked on. But at least we're moving in a positive direction here. 
So you're saying there's a chance. But very excited, very happy with the pile. I'm going to do some armadas and stuff like that, get some crews going with that stuff too. Uh, thank you all very, very much for watching the video today. Please sure leave any comments, anything I missed uh, that you have questions about down below in the actual comment section there. Uh, throw a little hit the like button. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, that'd be great too. You can also find me live on Twitch three days a week, Tuesday, 6.30 p.m., Thursday, 7.30 p.m., and Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., all Eastern time zone, Eastern U.S. time zones. Uh, again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll uh, see you around the galaxy. Take it easy, everybody.